As filmmakers, we're always striving to make our videos look and feel more cinematic. With so many variables at play, there's no single thing that makes a film cinematic, but rather a bunch of elements coming together. Let's jump in. What's up Alpha Universe, Jock Raffert here with a very exciting tutorial. For those of you who don't know me, I make videos for a living. I specialize in tourism, travel and adventure films. Check out my website and Instagram for info and updates. Now this video is the first of a five part series with an emphasis on advanced filmmaking and how to take your video work to the next level. What makes a video cinematic? Is it grading? Maybe slow motion, dramatic music, Add some black bars, some sound effects. Sure, all of these things play a role, but first we need to define the word cinematic. I believe the word cinematic refers to a film's ability to convey emotion by combining a multitude of elements. With so many elements, it's impossible to single one out. So instead, I'm going to share the core elements. The rest is up to you. First and most important is story. Beautiful visuals can only dazzle people for so long. But we live in an age where the web is oversaturated with pretty visuals and one of the few things that will set you apart is story. If you have a strong narrative, your film is bound to convey more feeling. Story and creativity will always trump expensive equipment and content is king. The biggest growth I experienced in my business was when I started to plan and script my projects. Not everyone has the ability to conjure up stories and script the project. I know I don't. And therefore it's important to involve creatives who specialize. In this case, a director or someone who writes for film. These individuals not only understand the storytelling process, but also how it will translate to film. Having a story gives the viewer an incentive to keep on watching. And if you start right, you'll be successful in bringing across the desired emotion. Here's an example. ضرب البيت بيت من ضرب لما انضرب البيت ما ضل عنا شيء قلت له لا تشوزي انه انا بدي اطلع على تركيا حتى لو بدي اعيش تحت شجره المهم بدي احمي ولادي Now you can watch the full film on my YouTube channel, but the most important thing to note is the first few seconds referred to as the hook. Within the first 30 seconds, the viewer can decide if they are interested enough to keep on watching. Having a plan going into a shoot not only results in better stories, but also means you're shooting more intentional and not just trying to get random B-roll. Who you choose for talent can seriously elevate or degrade your film, and it all comes down to one thing. Authenticity. If your actors cannot imitate authentic emotions, your film will go down the drain quickly. This is why I love filming documentaries, because most of my B-roll is unforced and unrehearsed by real people living out their most authentic moments. So the key to great cast is authenticity. Whether acted or unscripted, authenticity is the biggest factor that will make your viewer connect with your characters. Using professional models with acting experience will always be worth the investment. And these actors usually have reels or links to previous work to help you identify if they have what it takes. Now sound is not important. Sound is everything. Music and sound effects has the ability to instantly raise the cinematic value of your form. But it also has the ability to take away and destroy the experience. First, let's talk about music. Take a great story, Great gear, great cast. Choose the wrong music and you're simply not going to win over your audience. This is such an important element that I often spend more time looking for music than actually editing a project. The right music can instantly add emotion and make your film feel more cinematic. Here's some examples.
This is it. This is what matters. You may rarely look at it, but will always feel it. This is our signature, and it means everything. I have a golden rule when it comes to choosing music. If I don't get the feels within seconds, I know I have to look harder. As creatives, we have to trust our gut when it comes to what we feel. So if we don't feel it, we can't expect the audience to feel it. Sound design. Now if I told you that I spend a lot of time looking for music, I spend even more time doing sound design. I made a dedicated video about this in part 3 of the series. Shooting on a cinema camera with a high dynamic range can instantly raise the cinematic quality of your films. With the Sony FX series and the A7S Mark III, you can rest assured that you're getting an incredible dynamic range that rivals the highest end of cinema cameras. I mostly shoot on the A7S III, which technically isn't classified as a cinema camera, but it performs on the same level. Another way to improve the dynamic range of your visuals is to light. Lighting is probably the most important visual element that contributes to the cinematic, and it's what sets amateurs apart from professionals. If you know how to shape light, you can add serious production value to your films, even on a budget. Lighting helps with the cinematic for two reasons. The first, because a well-lit scene delivers a better dynamic range, and most important, because it sets the mood of a scene. In part 2 of this series, I go more into depth with it. Now this is where it gets interesting. Since there are actually no rules when it comes to framing, yes, the rule of thirds is waiting to be broken. It all depends on what emotion you want to convey. Framing is also one of the key elements to what makes a shot cinematic from a visual point of view. So here's a few of my favorite ways to frame for a cinematic image. Centering your subject can instantly make a shot feel more cinematic. Directors like Wes Anderson goes to the extreme with this by pretty much shooting every frame like it and it all comes down to symmetry. So the important rule here is to keep your lines straight. The way your subject moves within the frame also contributes to the cinematic. Whether you're locked off in a static shot or allowing your subject to move, the way they move will determine the emotion you feel. Shots that work really well here is subjects turning their heads or a body movement from start to finish. These shots work better in slow motion, giving more time for the movement to reach completion. You can take this a step further by doing match cuts between different frames that feel like they flow into each other. Synchronized motion with multiple subjects is an instant winner, and these shots are bound to look more cinematic. Having opposite movements across the frame is aesthetically pleasing, and I also incorporate this in my camera movements. Which brings me to my next point. With camera movements, you have to justify the type of movement, since they all have their own motivation and feeling. For example, pushing forward has to take you closer to the next scene. You don't want to push forward and then cut to a wider scene. Now I'm not going to go through all of the camera movements. Instead, I want to focus on my favorite ones, the ones I deem to be the most cinematic. Tracking shots, when done right, will add some serious production value to your film. Tracking shots only work when executed to perfection. In other words, your camera is moving at the exact same speed as your subject, or your subject stays in proportion to the frame. Having your camera move in one direction with your subject in the opposite direction is something often used in cinema. The Euro shot portrayed here was made famous by director Michael Bay, and you'll see it in every movie ever directed. Although these shots instantly feel cinematic, it's really important to keep the context of your film and to be intentional about the type of shots you choose. There's no point in using a cinematic hero shot if it doesn't fit the profile and flow of your story. There's something about the rawness of handheld footage that makes a scene feel cinematic, especially when filming in real time 24 or 25 frames per second. That's why having in body image stabilization in my Sony cameras is such an incredible feature because it makes up for the micro vibrations that come with using smaller form factors. I shoot about 80% of my video work just with my hands because it enables me to frame up the perfect shot with speed and ease, knowing when to cut. Keeping a shot for the right amount of time also contributes to the cinematic experience. That's why you have to train your eye to identify those cinematic moments. 
Sometimes the difference between split seconds can result in a shot losing its cinematic quality. Although slow motion tends to be more cinematic, you have to make sure that you don't end up overdoing it. Like all good things, it's about balance. And more often than not, a normal speed 24 frames per second video can be super cinematic as long as you stick to the shutter rule to maintain that natural motion blur. Now I prefer 50 frames per second as my go-to frame rate for slow motion and I only use 100 frames per second or more for specialized shots since I found it too slow sometimes. But I guess it all comes down to your edit and what your story requires. So there you have it. The core elements that will make your films feel more cinematic. Story first, authentic cast, taking the time to find the best music, sharpening up your sound design, from your lighting to the way you frame, the way your subject moves and the way the camera moves, handheld or tracking shots, frame rates and knowing when to cut. All these elements combined will add to the cinematic quality of your film and if executed correctly and within context of your story, the desired emotion will come through. And that's it for part one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.